All right, everybody. So we'll get started. I'll preface it with what we're going to co cover today. So the couple of things we want to cover today is feeder and final splits, especially in Philly. And we're also going to look at how we can front load problems, how we can maximize and be efficient with the spacing that we give final controllers. Because obviously in event level situations, when we have large gaps in the final and poor sequencing techniques, it, t it tends to give us more problems than having a bunch of aircraft there. So what Derek's great at doing, obviously, is real world. So you guys all know that. He's taught a lot of us, and he's just going to give us some of the concepts that we can translate into VATSIM. Um, before we get started, I just want to make These sure everybody has access to the uh, sweat box and, in Philly, right? User joined your channel. Yes, no? Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, let's go yep. ahead and I'll sign on to the sweat box. I will load up a file. So basically, Philly is on ILS 27 right and the part 27 left. We have a bunch of aircraft in the airspace. You can quick look. I'm going to prime up on 28.4. So you guys can quick look me. Okay. So the concept here that we want to do is we want to get to our final controllers the most efficient and proper spacing as possible. I'm going to let Derek take it away in a little bit. So here's a couple of concepts that we want to do first when we're front loading the aircraft. You see your you see your you know your arrival stream. You know exactly where every aircraft is going and you look at the the pertinent data points. Speed, altitude, and heading. Heading um, will sometimes change when the winds aloft are higher, lower, wherever it may be. If you're turning in your, if you're turning in into the wind, you see that your final will slow down. So you'll need to know that you're going to need to make more spacing behind it, and that's when the weather conditions there. But the two basic things that we want to look at on Sweatbox, since nothing is simulated, is both the ground speed and their altitude. That'll help us give both the separation and in-trail requirements that we need. Now, in terms of front loading, I'm going to let Derek take that and show you how to do it in real world. I'm gonna let the aircraft run a little bit because we all know who've ever run this box. This is coming in. This this comes in a little bit later. So while while you guys are looking at this and while Derek's uh, taking a look at what he's gonna show you guys, just take a look in your mind, knowing these aircraft and knowing the flows at Philly, who would be first and who's gonna be behind them. So you know, since this is two seven right, the people on the southeast side of the field, they're probably going to be closer to final. So you want to start scanning there. After that, you scan around and see what else is coming in and find the tie points that are pertinent to go there. So you know anybody that's coming in from the west is going to take a little bit longer than anybody that's coming in from the east or the north. So pay attention to that. Start building out your sequence now while you're watching this. And as Derek teaches, you can see, hey, maybe this would have been a better idea. Does anyone have, I know this is like, um, Kind of like interactive but does anyone have like any like questions like what is your mind thinking right now that you want to just say out loud and we can just go off of that or no if not i'll talk but i'd like to hear if anyone just has anything as you're watching this no one well i remember going back way back uh, when i was first taught tracon is that speed was not emphasized so if you could also talk about speed control as well when you see these things yeah, so like I'm gonna be honest, like this this sequence for even a com like someone that does this real world is this is has got some complexity to it. What I think about as I'm not even doing anything, I'm just watching this. I'm thinking about gaps that I just even need to provide for myself. So I look at 4380 and American 862. I see this Piedmont coming in from the east, and it's like, all right, well, American's about nine from Jim's Piedmont's about 15, so he's six in trail. That's going to work. Great. So one, two, three. But the thing is, is as I look off to the east, I see Piedmont over there, and I see this blue streak in American, and I'm like, well, where's the hole for Piedmont? So, you know, again, that's where, for example, I'm going to just use my air traffic brain. So I'm just going to pause this. Just pause it for one second because I want to talk about something. That's very important in air traffic and just anything in general. It's like when you're driving, for those that drive. What, what's really important here is everything in air traffic is about angles. Like, like the heading you choose is good. 
right? So if you're if you're new to this and you see 5433 Blue Street coming up on SO from the southwest and you see Piedmont, that's like a critical decision to make from the jump to go, I have to make a good choice right now. For me, let's not even talk about airspace. I just want to talk about, let's say, for example, the Philly airspace today has surfaced to 10,000. Let's just keep it simple. It's surfaced to 10,000, okay? You, you can't hurt anyone, okay? I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to put Piedmont on a 90 heading just to get to the point of where Blue Streak is going to get to. Like, I don't want these to be tied. So a lot of times what we'll even do is I may turn further left. So I might go P1 4976 fighting 050 because I want him to get away from the blue streak for just a moment. Or what we do is we just choose a hard heading and we point our Piedmont at the blue streak. So when I'm looking at this, I'm like, well, American and Piedmont are obviously going to be tied up. But that's okay. We just have to manipulate the situation to do something here to create a hole for ourselves. I'm not even thinking about the final control right now. I'm thinking about how can I make this easy on myself so I'm not giving a whole stack? Because don't forget, there's still planes coming in from the east as well. There's one from the north, two from the north, whatever. So my whole thing is, Jan, on pause. Okay. Is when I have this, I'm like, I'm gonna vector southeast bound toward my blue streak, right? So I'm not gonna ch I'm not gonna touch anyone's speed. My goal is to stay at 250 because I'm like 50 miles from the airport, right? Piedmont 4976, turn right, heading 160. So just do the 160 heading. Got it. Blue streak 5433 to set maintain 7,000. Down to 7,000. I don't want to descend Piedmont now. I want to get blue streak through Piedmont's altitude because right now Piedmont's already a thousand feet lower, right? So when we're separating airplanes, it's either a thousand or three. So I'm going to you know, point the Piedmont toward Blue Streak, okay? I'm going to let Blue Streak descend down. I'm going to leave Piedmont at nine. I don't want these two battling to get down lower and lower and lower. So once I see Blue Streak at about like seven and a half, maybe 7.8, then I'll give Piedmont a descent. But I want him to go southeast bound. This guy's going to be on vectors the whole way. So that's another thing that stands out to me as a controller is that right now my workload is increased because I'm having to look at a situation off to the west that, well, this airplane's not on an RNAV arrival. So what do I, I need to make sure that my scan is clean, right? So the first thing I'm doing right now is, oh, Piedmont and Blue Streak have divergence. Piedmont 4976, I don't even have to hold the altitude anymore. The center maintains 7,000. So I'm going to go to 7 with Piedmont 4976. Yeah, 7,000, 4976. American 2766, turn left hitting 350, maintain 10,000, vector sequence, ILS 27 right. So anytime we take anyone off the arrival, we have to restate the altitude, right? 350 heading 10,000 feet, American 2766. Now we're talking as this situation is all developing, there's other things that we need to do. I'm not really concerned about that right now because I just want to break this situation down to show you that right now, my main concern is the Piedmont and the Blue Streak. Team on 4976, turn left, heading 090. 090, 4976. Now, don't forget, because of this Piedmont, you have to understand that it's okay to get yourself what they call in a daisy chain situation. Don't forget what American does, unless there's like a 20-mile gap, 1309 Delta is probably going to have to do the same thing. Not for as long, but remember, the center is going to give this aircraft to you at 250. But look at the ground speed. They're not 250 right now, unless that is 250 at the window loft at 15,000 feet. But my goal right now is Piedmont to go eastbound to kind of follow, follow the path of the blue streak. I could probably even do an 80 heading, but I don't want to be too, too aggressive. So American 2766 to center maintain 8,000. So maintain 8,000, 2766. Good. So let's see. I'll break our 4380 down to four, contact approach. American 862 down to four, contact approach. The only issue that when this sweat box was created that I'm not a fan of, and I think it's kind of shit if I'm going to speak freely, is that in real world, if you don't tell these airplanes, that's why I don't really love Philadelphia in a sense, because you have like this RNAV arrival stuff, but then they also have these speeds to comply with like 190 and 190. Well, think about this. This arrival is kind of like a final. 4380 slows to 190, and American 862 is still hauling behind at 250. That wouldn't be realistic in real world, okay? My thing I'm telling the I'm telling the pilot in real world is, Brickyard 4380, delete the Wojcik speed, stay at 250. 
or I'm telling American 862, hey, slow now to 210. I would be controlling this. I wouldn't allow these two to get, you know, three and a half to four miles apart. That's not really how you want to work, right? So planes can get that close, but you don't know how the pilots are going to slow. So I would, again, the swap box probably needs to be edited, in my opinion. America 2766, turn right, hitting 100. Now, look, we've got a little bit of a sequence. American's going to turn back eastbound. Now we've got this American coming up from the south. So my thing is this. Blue Streak in America in 1845, that's my next scan. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that's going to be a tie too. Okay, Blue Streak 5433, vector for sequence, fly heading 090, maintain 7,000. I'm not going to let him just fly from roll to Beals and then be a tie with American 1845. Again, this is kind of a busy sweat box just to begin with. As you, as you see, we haven't even talked about the airplanes from the north. This sweat box, like I said, is, is definitely has complexity and volume. So again, I just kind of wanted to make the emphasis initially on the Piedmont Blue Street merge. That's a situation where you have to do something. You have to choose something. Whether you want to take Piedmont for a trip and leave them more northeast, well, then you're probably going to have to get a point out with departure. And then American hits the hole behind Blue Street. But again, you take American off the arrival and you have to tell them, hey, turn off hitting 350, maintain 10,000, vector ILS 27 right. Go do something else. You got to come back and say, American 2766, expect to, re expect to rejoin the arrival at roll. You know, there's a lot of information that is happening very fast. And that you have to be on top of it very, very fast. And it's unfortunate, but your workload is, is, is astronomical from the first few minutes of this problem. And if you're working both sides, you need to be doing things early. That's why in real world, we kind of cheat with airspace. As soon as Southwest from the Northwest checks in, I'm going to say to send a maintain 6,000 because I have to move on to something else. You know what I mean? So, again, that, that's kind of the first thing I just wanted to discuss. And, Jane, you can kind of just roll from there, you know? Yep, sorry. The Piedmont uh, command, would you want to give them? Uh, uh, well, Blue Street 5433, that'd be a 90 heading. Okay, got it. Thir yeah, 1309 Delta. I'm probably going to go 340 heading. And 8,000. Fly heading 340, 8,000. Okay. American 2766 heading 110 and go down to 7. All right, 110 down to 7,000. You know what I mean? Uh, Piedmont 4785, you know, again, we didn't get we didn't get to him. That, that's, you know, not the most ideal situation, but he'd go down to 3, for example. But again, my whole thing is American 1845, I would be saying fly heading 360 to set to maintain 6,000, right? I'm trying to get myself a sequence here. If you wanted to even be more helpful, what you could even do is this. American 2766, turn left heading 050 for sequence. Or you know what you could say? American 2766, fly heading 140. So American 2766 goes to a 140 heading. And what I'm thinking about already is that I see a gap to put Piedmont 4870 in behind Piedmont 4976. So you're thinking American 1845, Blue Streak 5433, turn left heading 070. Piedmont 4976, turn left heading 070. Piedmont 4870, fly heading 270, maintain 8,000. Delta 1309, turn right heading 040, descend to maintain 7,000. And you're just creating holes for yourself. You know what I mean? Like you just have to find something here to work with. Blue Street 5433, descend to maintain 6,000. Piedmont 4976, the center maintains 6,000. I see 12 miles between American and Piedmont, so American 2766, turn left hitting 080. Delta 1309, turn right hitting 120. You're doing a lot of vectoring in this one because you just have to have holes. But as a final controller, though, this is workable. Why? Why? Look at the north side. The north side only has, what, southwest, southwest, and blue streak, and there's, like, big gaps. So this is manageable if you're a final controller. You just have to have a good feed. If your feed sets you up, you're nice and clean. American 1845 heading uh, zero. You know, you can stay on the arrival. American 1845 just going to maintain 4,000. Might as well go down to four because you're already high. Got a 1309 just going to maintain 7,000. And if we get if we give that 1309 a good vector, we don't even need to. We don't need to turn spirit now. So now we're back to where we first started. Now we don't have to turn anybody off the SO arrival or this Pat's arrival. So as soon as spirit checks in, I'm like, hey, expect ILS two seven right instead of maintain seven thousand. You know what I mean? You don't even have to. Is, is anyone? Is everyone kind of following this? You can pause. Is, is everyone kind of following what I'm trying to say? 
Yeah, you yeah. don't really have to like once you kind of like get the planes moving in a specific direction, then you just hold you just create gaps for yourself. So you can really only hurt yourself. Like Piedmont 4870, for example. Unpause it for just a moment, Gene. I want to show you, I want to show you guys something. Piedmont 4870, that's one of those where as his company, Piedmont 4976, is going by him, you kind of want to turn because don't forget, he's got to make a hard right turn to the northeast. Blue Shirt 5433, turn left, hitting 350. Okay. You know, and Piedmont 4976 just pretty much seals in that heading. If you want 4870 to set and maintain 6,000, we're going to point ourselves at each other, which we have to kind of do, but we want to get beneath American. Delta 1309, turn left 09 or 0. So the whole goal, like I said, I, like I, said, I don't want to hijack this, this whole thing, but I just wanted to kind of get people seeing for the feed aspect. It's really just making a plan and kind of being flexible. Again, American 2766, I wanted him to follow the Piedmont, but then I look off to the east and I'm like, oh, shit, there's another Piedmont out there. I got to have a gap for him. So, as soon as Piedmont 4870, kind of like another like another two or three more miles, I'm pretty much going to go right turn 030, give him a good right turn 030, and let this whole thing gel. But look, at the, I mean, the problem is really back to where, you know, it's you're just running a final problem now. The main thing, though, and I know we do this in real world, I'm not sure what we do on here, is we, we put NR in the scratch pad to let them know that, you know, the, the final controller know they're not on the uh, arrival. So in this case, I'm going to go Piedmont 4870, turn right, right turn, heading 030. You just want to make sure you're definitely in the hole. And then once you're, you know, everyone's match speeds, everyone's 250. But again, you know, these airplanes are also following a little bit of the arrival. Like 1845 was still on the arrival, so he's slowing to 190. So again, prior to him doing that, you would have had to have said American 1845, delete the Wojcik speed, maintain 250 knots. And all these other airplanes are also off the arrival as well. So, again, there's a lot of phraseology surrounding the whole Philadelphia aspect because there's, like, this speed control with the stars. And it's unfortunate that that Philly's like this in a sense. I, I know I'm kind of knocking it during the session here, but it's just tough. Like, there's no other facility that really does this in our airspace, you know? So again, you could probably start this from the, the beginning again, and and you know you could do it all over again. But the main thing is kind of like front loading the problem, like making sure that the airplanes get up to the final. Once you get an established final, kind of like we have out here, we, we you know we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight planes. At some point, you're probably going to have to give the final controller a little bit of relief and start slowing, like. That'll 1309, slow to 230. American 2766, slow to 230. I know I don't usually use 230. I always say, guys, go to 210. But 210 might be a little too soon being this far out. But think about it. Like when you're driving a car on the highway, there's a guy going past you doing 20 miles an hour faster. You're doing 80. He's doing 100. It's significantly different. So, again, just 20 knots off, off the speed, off the indicated airspeed, could be a huge difference for the final controller so they don't go down the shitter. You don't want the final out where American 862 is, right? You want the final within several miles of where Southwest 367 is. So, again, you know, we're kind of just letting this go right now, but that's kind of what I wanted to point out was just the merge initially. The merge is important, you know? Good. Let me pause this here and see if there's any questions on people and techniques that Derek used, because I know a lot of you guys don't see this that often and plan out that far ahead. So, thoughts? Mm -hmm. It's just vector. I mean, the other option is this. You know what you'd have to do? Can you restart the problem? Yeah. The only other option, if you can't make a hole, is you got to give them a stack. So we'll, we'll go over that. Creating the stack is pretty easy. You're just holding altitude, and you're just giving the final controller two planes within, like, you know, a mile or so of each other, whatever. You know who we could, we could do it with? We could do it with Piedmont and American, or we can do it with 40, you know, we could do it with someone else from the East. But, yeah, unpause it, and we can just play with it. Give me one sec. 
just to add a little bit more complexity, I'll leave the satellite arrivals on too. You don't have to control it, just to kind of see like this is the limitations on when we have a busy airspace. All right, we are on pause. Does anybody just want to actually work this that's like certified to work this and then it'd be more fun we can kind of like talk while you're doing it i don't know does anybody want to work it or what yeah let's get a volunteer Who? who's not shy bench of Engo, you got the most hours at philly you want to try this uh no not really Dylan, you're brand new. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Don't be nervous. All right. Somebody's going to have to do it because I have to run the commands. Wilbert? Nobody? Uh, he said no thanks. thanks. All right. How about this? I will run it, and Derek will correct me. Sure. All right, cool. Run pause. All right, so I'm going to put uh, 4380 first. So 4380, maintain 250 knots, and direct will check. There it is. American 862, speed 250. All right, I'm looking at my problem from the north. It looks like everybody's spaced. We're looking at the southwest, P down 4976. Who's going to be first? Who's going to be second? I'm just going to do this as a normal person. I was like, you know what? We're going to put 4976 first. We about 4976, fly heading 0, 090, 0, set of maintain 7000. Again, we're not doing the normal altitude restrictions here at Philly. We're just showing some concepts. Let me delete 8 Sierra Sierra. Actually, no, we'll leave them there since it's 6000. So I want to start getting these guys down, getting ready for the 6000 restriction. So there's nobody else there. There's a 6000 crossing. So what are we going to do? We got 4380, set of maintain 7000. Okay, bring them down to 7. Now we're looking at our sequence. He's going to be 1. Now, let's say I'm the student. 4785, turn left heading 270. I'm going to try to fit him in because I think I have the room. And we're going to create a problem for ourselves. The Piedmont 4875, we'll do 250 knots. What we're going to do is we're going to do an end command based off of where they're heading. If you guys are looking at my screen, you could see that there are lines that'll show where these two potential aircraft can meet. So I know I'm going to have an issue there. So that's problem solving number one. What do we do now? Anybody have options on what we can solve between 4976 and Blue Street 5433? Blue Street 5433, terminating 090. 
All right, 5433, turn right heading 090. And 4976 is on a 90 heading. So now we're just going to be paralleling them. Yeah. Perfect. But Piedmont has space to move, so he always can turn like uh, 120 or something. Okay, okay so good, who's... good, good. Who's going to be first out of those two, Piedmont or Blue Streak? Blue Streak. Okay, so make it work, Don. You want, I'm uh, sorry, did you want the 140 heading? Uh, is 4976 at 250 knots? Uh, normal speed, but we'll put him down to 250. Well, he's under 10,000. He should be 250, right? Um, sorry, with this sweat box, it just says normal speed, so he can be anywhere between 180 and 250. Blue streak 5433. Does it maintain 7,000? Down to 7,000, 5433. Let's make it 150. 150, 4976. And we're not dealing with the other guys that are on the gyms, right? Like they're just following their path? Correct. Like Prickia 4380 and, and such. Mm -hmm. I thought I could recreate a stack, but its file's not designed that way. American 2766. Uh, let's see. Turn left heading 010. Descend to maintain 8000. All right, 010. Descend to maintain 8000. 2766. Piedmont 4976. Turn left heading 090. 090. 4976. Now let's aim for a five miles in trail to give uh, approach in space. I was thinking that you need more because you have those other guys coming from the east. Yep. Yeah, so American 1845 and... Uh... Correct. I want five miles going to final. So figure, do you need... Um, so space them out however you need. So let me pause this here. It's actually a great example that Don's, that Don's showing. I'm going to zoom in on my screen here. Now, we know that 4785 is going to be next because there's nobody else there so who do you have going next behind 4785 don uh i think american 1845 is going to be the next one and then blue streak 5433 that's how it looks to me okay now did we measure no i'm just eyeballing it But Blue Streak's on a heading, so he's not he's not on the arrival anymore. Right? So he'll stay on that heading until I turn him. Correct. So do you know if you let them fly at this heading, do you know just approximately how many miles you'll have? So it looks to me like uh, it should be like five to six miles. That is 100% correct. So it's going to be about five to six miles. So, the, he, so Don now knows he has a gap. With the tie points that you're looking at, just by eyeballing it, you know that 1845 is going to go next. So how do you, John, my question to you is how would you protect yourself to ensure you know exactly what these aircraft are doing, knowing what the arrival chart says? You're asking me? How do I protect? Mm -hmm. I just keep the yeah. altitude separation. Okay. And to ensure spacing, what would you do? So, uh, if it looks like it's going to be close, then I just turn Blue Easy, Streak 5433 to the right and uh, make a little more space. Perfect. 
Now, in terms of scanning, what does the speed show you between 1845 and 5433? So it's, uh, well, I mean, you, you can see it. American 1845 is at 290 over the ground, and 5433 is 240. Okay, good. So you know 100% that's going to work out. Now, the issue is, if 5433 is showing 240 over the ground, in terms of sequencing, what should your next concern be? Piedmont 4976. Perfect. Okay. So everybody follows Don's logic and his thinking right now. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Let's resume. Go ahead and work it, Don. Again, 2766, turn right heading 110. Turn right heading 110. We have Piedmont 4870 inbound as well. I'm going to delete these north guys. Don't even worry about that. It looks okay. I think people on 4870 can just stay on his heading and uh, he'll just fall in behind 2766. Like, he can't go in front of that sequence. The sequence is already there. Okay, good. So in your mind, you're trying to make space now between 4976 and who? 4976, then it's American 2766. Then the next one looks like it'll be 4870. Like that's that's the next place I see a space. Good. And then 1309. And the key here is consistent data block scanning, just to make sure the aircraft is doing what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, blue streak 5433. Was I confused? Was he not on a heading? 5433, let me pause it. 5433 was? He was just on the star. It was just Piedmont and American? Correct. So Piedmont, uh, the, what you gave 5433 was maintain 7,000. Piedmont 4976 was a 150 heading. Um, I thought 5433 was a 090. Zero, zero. And then 4976 was like the... 120 or something? Am I thinking? Yep, so 4976 was a 0 09 or 0 heading. Okay, and it's American 2766, who's the 120? Okay, yeah, I just mixed it up. Uh, 2766, I have him at a 010 zero, zero heading. You want me to put him on a 20? 20? 2766? Yep, I had him on a one, one, 120. Uh, zero, 120, okay. Yeah, 110 or 120, something like that. Just okay. something greater than 90, like 20 degrees greater than 90 was cool. my thinking. They are at a 120 heading now. I'm just saying that uh, 1845 and 5433 are not, uh, that's not working out how I was expecting it. I was thinking 5433 was going on a 090. So let's do this. Uh, Blue Streak 5433, turn right heading 110. Turn right heading 110. That's a good thing, a call by Don this early without letting it without letting it get into the problem box where you're not going to have a lot of maneuvering space. So that was a good catch by him. And also to, to piggyback on that, when Derek said they, they used scratch pads um, um, in real world, it was NR, November Romeo, that they're not on the route. So that's a good way to scratch pad yourself and figure out when things get complicated here. This applies to a lot of events where there's a lot that's going on. You're giving vectors... Um, to try to fix problems, but they're creating more when you start to lose track of them, which happens normally when we have higher than event levels. So that's one of the takeaways that you should get from here is utilize your scratch pads and know exactly what everybody's doing. Um, good job. So we're on pause. Again, 1845, just going to maintain 6,000. Down to 6,000, 1845. For those of you watching my screen, you see there's going to be a point, uh, about 1.84 difference in distance. And watch what happens when the aircraft starts to turn. Again, 
American 2766, turn left heading 090. 090, 2766. Pima 4870, uh, fly heading 270. 270 on the heading, 4870. American 2766, then to maintain 7000. Down to 7000, 2766. Pacific 5433, turn left heading 010. 010, 5433, Senate maintain 6,000. Senate maintain 6,000, 5433. Right, 1845, contact uh, Philly approach, final. All right, we'll see you. Forty nine seventy six, turn left heading zero one zero. Zero one zero, I'm sorry, call sign again. Piedmont forty nine seventy six. Forty nine seventy six, zero one zero heading. Thirteen zero nine, uh, Senate maintain seven thousand. Senate maintain seven thousand, Delta thirteen oh nine. Yeah, 4870, turn left, heading 240. 240 in the heading, 4870. Mr. 5433, contact uh, Philly Approach. See ya. If you notice, it's spacing about six six miles. Okay, I'm going to pause this right here. Good job, Don. Thank you. Now, let's measure a little bit. 49.76 and 27.66 is 5.7 between them, five and a half miles. The next following aircraft behind them is about 9.13 miles. Uh, call it nine miles. Don, what Delta was your sequence? Yeah. Yeah, so... I was just looking if Delta 1309 stays on the arrival. I think that will work out. I mean, I haven't measured it. I'm just kind of uh, looking. But I think that will work out and that will close the gap. And what if it doesn't? What ends up happening when you don't so close the gap? So then I can always give them a vector as the two aircraft get closer. You know, just give them a quick turn to the right and then back to the left. Derek, what would you do in the situation, and would you be able to fit 4870 between 2766 and 1309, and would that be advisable? 4870 between who? 1309 and 2766. Yeah, only you would just have to leave Piedmont East, Delta have to follow like on a 110, 120, and then American just goes north. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, you can always just... Remember, while one airplane is going a mile the other way, and the other airplane is going a mile the other way, you're gaining two miles. It's just like two, four, six, and boom, you turn, you know? So it's doable. 
American 2766 flies like a 50 heading. Pima just stays like on a 100 degree heading. Of course, the greater the heading, the faster the divergence and like everything happens. You know, and Delta just stays behind. You could do it. Or you could do this. You could do... Um, you could do this. You could just leave American 2760. You know what? Just unpause real quick. I'll show you something. Unpause it. Cool. American 2766, turn left heading 040, maintain 7000. 040 zero, zero, down to 7000, 2766. Piedmont 4870, you're already in a. Oh gosh, what's going on here? Uh, he's on a 240. Yeah, I was diverging him from Delta 1309, and I thought I would bring him back around behind him. All right, well, let's just do this. Delta 1309, turn right heading 100, zero, zero, maintain 7000. 100, 7000, 1309. Piedmont 4870, turn right heading 040. Zero, Zero four zero. Let me pause this. Hold on, I got stuck. Okay, so just make Delta thirteen oh nine and Piedmont forty eight seventy a stack. I didn't know. I didn't know forty eight seventy was going southwest. I'm sorry. Um, so forty eight seventy. What do you want him to do? I want him to go right. Right turn zero four zero. Okay. And stay at eight. Stay at eight. Don't descend. So the reason I did it was because he was on a two seventy and the mm -hmm. other guys were all on nineties. So they were yeah, exactly yeah, you get away from yeah, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Direction. So I had right. to give him like uh, a vector off of that path so mm -hmm. that he can then mm -hmm. turn. Mm -hmm. and no, no, follow. you're doing it. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I would I just, I just, I just my my logic, my thinking. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm just I'm like if I'm like I'm looking at the final. The final doesn't have much going on. It's got what American blue streak. It's got one from the north. Like, I'm just going to deliver a stack to the final and be done. So, for example, like, three Sierra Echo, go down to four with him, right? Or three, whatever the hell he goes to. American 2766, heading 360. 360, 2766. Double 1309, turn left 070. 070, 1309. Pima 4870, heading 070, descend and maintain 7,000. 070, descend and maintain 7,000, 4870. This is what I feel like you were going to do, uh, Donald. I just didn't know initially he was on a 240. I thought he was yeah, set yeah, yeah. east. So, yeah, you, this is what you were going to do anyway. So, we're kind of doing what you would have done. I just thought he was already northeast. I'm, I apologize. If that was the case, I would still stack him. You know what I mean? Like, you, which you, you could still do. You know what I mean? If you had to put him in a position where 1309 goes down to 6, Pima 4870 goes down to 7. And you just stack them. But again, in this case, it's kind of hard to catch up to him because you're already kind of like, you know, like the airplane's already behind. But um, you could always just deliver them. Because, like, I want to show a stack, for example. Let's do this. Uh, America 2766 heading 350. 350, 2766. Um, and um, let's do Piedmont 4870. Speed up to 250 knots, please. And turn left heading 050. 050250 on the speed, 4870. Good. American 2766, go to 6000. 6000, 2766. So 1309, descend to 6000. Down to 6000, 1309. Come on, 4976, down to 4000. Down to 4000, 4976. So let's say, for example, you had to deliver a stack to the final. 1309 goes to 6. Come on, 4870, I'm kind of letting them cut off. And what we'll do here, you'll see in a, in a minute. Delta 1309, turn left heading 360. 360, 1309. User joined your channel. So you can use this technique, because I didn't really answer the previous person's question about how would you do this if you didn't have a gap, right? If you didn't have a, a gap from your pole, what would you do? I would maybe just leave two pointed the same direction. So 1309 is going to go, let's say that maybe this next aircraft's over by Jim's. You're like, crap, I got to get the Piedmont in there because there's really no room for him to go eastbound, which is going to force me to make a 250 heading off of Jim's again, right? So force Piedmont northeast and just hold altitude. So 4870 just goes northeast. 1309 goes to six. Merge it targeting procedures. Let's say there's a Jim's coming up. Turn right heading 350 to set and maintain 6,000, right? So you're six, seven, and then you get like another eight for six or eight for seven, whatever you, whatever you got to do, right? So I'm going to call him. Piedmont 4870, travel at one o'clock, just over four and a half northbound, 6,000, a mad dog. All right, yeah, we're looking for him. Little 1309, traffic off the left o'clock. I'm sorry, left o'clock side. Traffic off the seven o'clock side and four northeast bound to join up with you as an Embraer 145, right? Okay, Roger, we're looking for him. Piedmont 4870, turn left hitting 010. 010, 4870. 
So just let the final know, like, hey, man, I got a stack coming your way, six and seven, your control. All right, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Cool. All right, so let's say I get both these guys and I'm working the final. American 2766, turn right, hitting 080 to send a main thousand. 080 down to 4,000, 2766. We're just going to focus like on these three airplanes in here just to make the point. But if you have to run them tight like this, you know, just give the guy a heads up. Like, cool, you know. And then if you're working the split, I would make sure I talk to the north side guy and say, hey, man, if you have room for maybe an extra few miles on the north side, like Piedmont 4904, he'd be getting like a quick 240 jolt. You know, I don't want him to go in there, obviously, because then I'm going to have two, two on the south side, two on the north side. So you got to kind of like create a hole, you know, for him, right? Piedmont 4870, flooding 030. 030, 30 I'll just deliver them like this and be done, you know? Be done. That'll turn to the downwind. p will turn to the downwind in just a minute. And I'll show you what we're talking about. And all you got to do is let it gel. That's what I'm saying. Like, like as you see this in real, in real world, like, you get a stack sometimes. You get a go-around, right? You're not planning for a go-around in the sequence, right? Well, it happens. So just stack them. Six and five, four and three, five and seven, or five and six, whatever you want to do. That a 1309, turn right hitting 090. 090, 1309. American 2766, turn left hitting 360. 360, 2766. That a 1309, descend to maintain 4000 in the turn. Traffic's 1 o'clock and 2 and a half. Eastbound at TBM at 3. Looking down to 4000, 1309. Cool, so Delta's in the turn. Eastbound, we'll let Piedmont just hang there for just a moment, and then we'll turn to eastbound as well. Three zero echoes, not going to eat the wake of a 737. So once we're out of the flight path behind the tail, right? So now we're turning away from a, from the Sierra Echo. I think in real world, the recap for that's an I, Americans, an F, right? So we got to have definitely four miles directly behind. Well, we don't want to go to 3,000 right there. So we got to wait just a quick, quick minute, you know? Piedmont 4870, turn right hitting 0, 9, or 0. Descend to maintain 6,000. So now I'm stepping down. 0, 9, or 0, down to 6, 4870. And all I'm going to do is turn off the downwind. Let's say three. Let's say let's say even three Sierra Echo was landing at Philadelphia. Let's make it happen. American twenty seven sixty six. Turn left three zero zero. Intercept. The center maintain two thousand one hundred. Left three zero zero. Intercept twenty one hundred twenty seven sixty six. All right. So we're just going to chill here. Total thirteen oh nine. Uh, the TBM traffic's twelve o'clock. Turning off the downwind to base. Cop, traffic on site. Very good. Piedmont 4870, I will turn to the base leg in just a moment. Slow to 180 knots. I don't want my final getting out there. You don't have to acknowledge it, Jim, but just slow to 180, Piedmont 4870. Got it, got it. Three Sierra Echo, turn left hitting 350. 350. American 2766, the airport's 10 o'clock and 12. You have it? We got it. American 2766, clear visual approach, 27 right, 180 knots or better to Jalto. Doing it all, 2766. Very good. Three Sierra Echo, to set a maintain 2100. 2,100, 3 Sierra Echo. Piedmont 4870, to set to maintain 5,000, slow to 180. Down to 5,000, speed 180. American 2766, Philadelphia Tower, D-Team 5. We'll see you later, guys. See ya. Delta 1309, turn left, hitting 030, slow to 170. Turn left, 030, speed 170, 1309. So I'm just turning off the downwind of the base. I'm using a little bit of course divergence. Three Sierra Echo is going to a 350. 1309, the only reason I'm going to a 30 is because I don't want just the divergence where I can turn and descend. I also want the room for the space in the final because the TBM is not going to hold that speed forever, right? So three Sierra Echo, stay at 160 knots, please. All right, 160 knots, three Sierra Echo. Delta 1309, traffic to file is going to be off the 9 o'clock side and just over two northwest by the TBM at 2,500 feet. Descent of 18, 3,000. Got him in sight down to 3,000, 1309. Good. I've got course divergence with Piedmont and Delta, so I'm only going to go to four because of McGuire's airspace. Piedmont 4870 to set him 18, 4,000. Traffic, no factor. All right, down to 4,000, 4870. Three Sierra Echo, caution the lake. You're following a 737. If you happen to have him, he's 10 o'clock and just over six. Got him in sight. Three Sierra Echo, turn left hitting 300. Follow the 737. Caution the lake, turbulence. Clear visual approach on my 27 right. All right, we'll follow the big boy. Clear visual approach, three Sierra Echo. Very good. 1309 Delta, slow to 160. Down to 160, 1309. Just be patient. Delta 1309, turn left heading 300, intercept 27 right. Left heading 300, intercept a localizer. Piedmont 4870, turn left heading 330. 
370. Now I can be aggressive on my Piedmont turn because Delta's been on the 30 heading going to a 330, so I might as well just go, or he's turning into a 300, so I might as well just go ahead and turn all the way. I can turn Piedmont all the way, I just don't want to be shallow of the final. So three Sierra Echo, 160 knots for, uh, to Jalto, and New York Towers, uh, sorry, <laughs> Philadelphia Towers, 18.5. We'll see you. We'll see you. Be my 48.70, slow to 170 knots, and uh, turn left hitting 310. 310, 170 knots, 48.70. So that's like a scenario I'm just making up as we're going, you know what I mean? But 1309 Delta, intercept the localizer, heading 300. Let me know when you have the airport. All right, we're turning down to intercept, and we got the field in sight, 1309. Very good. Little 1309, uh, clear the visual approach, runway 27 right, 160 knots. All right, 27 right, 160 knots, full Jalta, 1309. Very good. Piedmont 4870, channel heading 300, intercept the 27 right localizer. All right, uh, 300 and intercept the low 4870. Good. So, like, you know, this is like a basic example where we're kind of just playing around, but hey, 3 Sierra Echo is out there at 3. Okay, well, 1309 goes down to 4. You know, we don't want to wake up 3 Sierra Echo with American 2766. We don't want Delta to be too far up Sierra Echo's butt. You know, given Philadelphia Tower, a good four and a quarter mile there. Like I said, it's going to compress a little bit, but we're on a visual day. We can go down to less than two and a half. Three Sierra Echo is going to slow up a little bit there, but, you know, the Mad Dog is going to go to final approach speed. You know, they can do the, probably the same speed as a TBM on the final. Piedmont 4870, same exact thing. He's an Embraer 145. He can slow up the final at some point. But the whole point in this case is, is that you can have a stack, and then you're just turning off the downwind. So the final controller doesn't care. Give them, give them to him separated. It doesn't matter. Oh, he didn't have five miles behind. Piedmont 4870 doesn't need to be five miles behind. Look, he's he's right here. He's he's still four and a half behind Delta. You just let him go like another mile or two past Delta on the downwind and then turn northbound and you're done. You know what I mean? It's there's nothing to it. You're just turning off the downwind and it's like splitting them off. It's like bing, 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 and you're done. You know what I mean? Does that make sense for everyone? Yeah, that was interesting yeah. to see uh, because it wouldn't have occurred to me. I would have tried to diverge them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like uh, no, no, one guy on a zero nine is zero. The guy that was too close behind, I would have just uh, turned into like a yeah, exactly yeah, one ten or no, something like yeah. that. Leave him on the down one and just use altitude, right? So you're just calling. You got to do the merging target, or it's more of a courtesy, right? Like these guys aren't used to coming into an airport. Like on a think about this. Ninety nine percent of the time when you're flying into the final airspace, right? You're already like four or five miles from someone. Yeah, oh yeah, traffic inside. You turn or whatever. This is more of like a courtesy, like, so they don't go like, hey, approach, is there a guy in front of us? Like, you know what I mean? They're not used to that. Like, is there a guy underneath of us? Or is there a guy on top of us? When you go into the final box in real world, there's no one like usually flying over your head, you know, especially if it's like a 7-4, right? You definitely want to get the guy a heads up. Hey, traffic, six o'clock, you know, hey, Sam, we'll see you later. You know, the traffic six o'clock in a mile, a heavy 747 at 4,000, you know, oh, caution awake turbulence. Like, that's a good courtesy call, you know, so... Same thing here. You're letting Delta know, like, hey, you're gonna be following a TBM. You're gonna be just above him. He's turning off the base or down in the final, base to final. Piedmont 4870. You're following the Mad Dog. Slow to 180 now. I don't want you going all the way out there. Only go to four. But it's nice though when they're stacked because on a visual day, how easy is it to look like down into your left outside of the window, traffic in sight? Like, you does he doesn't have to look for him. Like, oh, we don't see him on the final. He's right there in front of him. So, you know, again, and it's just being courteous to say, like, traffic to follow. You know, again, the pilots know you're going to give them room. But for the pilots that are like, you want us to follow that guy? No, no, no. Stay on the 90. Like, I'm a big fan of even using plain, plain English in real world and saying, hey, my 4870 traffic to follow 11 o'clock and a mile and a half from westbound, a mad dog out of three for whatever. Just playing the 90 heading for another mile or two. Like, turn you into, don't turn into the base like in just a minute. Okay, we'll stay on the 90 heading. We got him in sight. Pima 4870. Pima 4870, very good. By the time I'm probably done saying all of that and he repeats it back, it's probably time to say, Pima 4870, turn left heading 360. So you're just turning off the downwind of the final and, and being done with it. So that, that's my rant. Awesome. Thank you. Which leads us, we'll run the final box and double downwind this time. Any questions, comments uh, on this?
All right. Do I have any volunteers that wants to work the final? All right, we'll let this run. So what do you guys see here while we're letting this file run? Are you starting to make your sequence? Do you know who's going to go first? Man, these students don't give a shit tonight now. <laughs> run it, let's go. All right, we're running it. So thought process, okay. who's going to go first? As a controller, Derek, what would you be doing? Brickyard's more established in the turn. Uh, Southwest also doesn't fly Embraer 145, so I don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's 4380, descent and maintain 4000, style it back to 180. No, 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 no. Nope. I want to go I want to go stay at 250. Okay. Or I would probably say in real world 210 or greater. So Brickyard 4380 descent and maintain 2100, speed 210 or greater. All right, uh, 210 or greater, and down to 2100, 4380. Southwest 367, the center maintain 3000. Center maintain 3000, Southwest 367. American 862, speed 210, then the center maintain 4000, American 862. 862, speed 210, then down to 4. United 2233, the center maintain 4000. Center maintain 4000, 2233. Brickyard 4380, turn left heading 360. Turn left heading 360, 4380. Wow, this final problem is no fucking joke already. You had a 22.33, you slowed a 2.10. Speed 2.10, 22.33. Speed 2.10, 22.33. Turn left heading 360. Turn left heading 360, 4380. 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 Turn left heading American 862, slow to 180. 180, 862. Southwest 367, turn right heading 180. 180, 367. Brickyard 4380, slow to 180. Speed 180, 4380. Piedmont 4785, descent to maintain 4000. Down to 4000, 4785. Brickyard 4380. You know what? Pause it real quick. This is actually really important. Perfect. Let me ask you guys an honest question. Be honest. You can be honest. I just want to know. Like, I'm going to ask the first question. And I just want you to say, like, me. How many people right now on Batson would say, Brickyard 4380, airport's 9 o'clock, 8 miles of eyes when you have it? How many people right now would say that? You're quiet means it's a yes. Yeah. I mean, seriously. I mean, come on. There's got to be more. Is anyone else here approach certified? Come on. I mean, I usually point them at the airport before I ask them yes, to look for it. for it. That's my point. Right. So exactly. So I'm a fan of Brickyard 4380, turn left heading 300, intercept the localizer, advise the field inside. I want you turning. I don't want this. This is the problem. And if I hear you do this, I'm like, you're, you're kind of like a bad approach controller. Okay. I'm going to be honest. You're bad. You don't want the guy pointing toward the localizer, like with the potential to blow through the final. And you're having a conversation about, do you have the airport? Like, could you imagine in real world, Brick Air 4380, the airport's 9 o'clock, 10 miles of Osfield and Sun. Or even just this, Brick Air 4380 of Osfield and Sun. Oh, fuck. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's a, get off the frequency. Get off. <laughs> Unkey. Unkey. Like, stop. Get off. Get off. It's like, you know, you're killing me. You're killing me. So, how do you prevent that? You turn them first. Or, if you don't even want them to talk, you just say this. Brickyard 4380, turn left heading 300, intercept the localizer. Go do something else. Come back to him. Brickyard 4380, do you have the field inside? We do. Brickyard 4380, clear vision approach to submarine. You're done. But I am not going to ask some bat some pilot. Brickyard 4380, do you have the airport inside? Oh, it's my first time here. I've never really been here before. Um, where is it at again? I think we said, oh, it's, oh, yeah, we got it. We got it. It's like, oh, my. By the time you say turn left, you're going to have to say turn left in 240. And now he's head to head with Southwest. And Southwest is like, yeah, we got the airport and the jet ahead of us. Yeah, we see it. And it's like a whole stop asking the pilots on the base like, do they see it? 
Turn them first. Unpause and turn break up 4380, please. Okay. Unpause and uh, 4380 is the 300 heading. Southwest 367, heading 180, slow to 180. Heading 180, speed 180, Southwest 367. Piedmont 4785, speed 210. Speed 210, 4785. United 2233, reduce speed of 180. Speed 180, 2243. Can I just pause for a minute? Go ahead. Sure. Go ahead. So uh, you gave Brickyard 4380 uh, 2,100. You gave Southwest 367 3,000. Is that not going to be a problem here? Uh, no. Why would it be a problem? I don't understand that. What do you mean? So it's only 900 feet. It's not 1,000 feet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and they're like feet. on opposite it's a tracks. Yeah, it's 1,000 feet on opposite legs. But, you know, again, I, I can't use two. So what we really do, you're going to laugh at this, but it's more of like – you give them as much protection as you can, but I'm not going to leave Southwest at four. I'm not going to leave Southwest at four. I'm not going to say to set them 18, 3,100. I'm not going to, you know what I mean? I'm just not, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go three and 21 as much as I can, or I'm going to go three and four, either one. But when I know I'm turning inside of Jalto and I know I'm going to make that turn, that's kind of like, it is what it is. I mean, it's unfortunately there's like, it's just risk. It's just risk and you're hoping it works. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, Southwest 367, maintain 3,000. Yeah, no problem. Alright, 3,000, Southwest 367. User left your channel. Alright, uh, United 2233 to 718. Oh, she don't maintain 4, that's fine, that's fine. Um, let's go, Southwest 2402, speed 210, maintain 4,000. Speed 240, 2,000. That would be bad, that would be bad, no 240. Oh, speed, oh, sorry, say again? Speed 210, 4,000, Southwest 2402. Speed 210, down, down. Uh oh, we're about to kill Brickyard Jan. User disconnected from your. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Southwest 367, turn left heading 150 immediately for traffic. Derek, one more question, if you can pause it one more second. Holy shit. So, could you have given Brickyard 4380 2000 since you're not going to put him on the ILS anyway? Yeah, I just, I know pilots a lot of times they like the they like the glide at 21, so I usually just issue 21. You know what I mean? I could give him two. I could give him two. If it's, right, it's, as long it's, as it's, it's over MVA, right? Yeah, MVA, yeah, I'm yeah. good. Yeah, okay. technically. Yeah. Derek, that was my fault. He's going to intercept now. Okay, Roger. Pilots right, always no. respond okay. immediately. Oh, we see the traffic. Thanks. Here's the good thing. We're not having a deal right now. It's 3.6. This is good. And that's, is it Course Divergence there? Is there a little Course Divergence there? Is he's Brickyard Northwest bound? Brickyard is turning in 240. User joined your channel. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Got a little course. Is it Course Divergence or is that side by side? I don't know. Southwest 367, no problem. Turn right to heading of uh, 250 intercept. Holy shit. All right, 250 to intercept, 367. American 862, telephone heading 340. 340, 862. Southwest 367, if you go through, no problem. Just continue the right turn heading 300 to intercept. Just maintain 2,000. All right, down to 2,000. We're intercepting now, 367. American 862, descend to maintain 3,000. 3,862. Southwest 2402, speed 180. Speed 180, 2402. Blue Street 5433, slow 180, maintain 4,000. Speed 180, down to 4,000, 5433. American 2783, slow to 180, then maintain 4,000. Speed 180, down to 4, 2783. Brickyard 3040, 180, Zeronos, the Jalto, New York Tower. Fuck, Philadelphia Tower's 18, uh, 18 fouls. We'll see ya, 438. Southwest 367, traffic to follow is 2 o'clock and 4 and beer at 2. Ah, uh, we got him. Southwest 367, follow the traffic, clear approach 27 right. Visual approach 27 right, 367. Not a 2233, turn right, heading 180. Lighting 180, 2233. So it should 5433, slow to 170. Speed 170, 5433. American 862, telephone 300, intercept. Travel to fall, 10 o'clock, 4 miles, Embraer at 2. Looking now, 300, got him in sight. American 862, follow the traffic, clear visual approach, 27 right, speed 170. Speed 170, will follow the traffic, 862. Now at 2233, turn right in 240, intercept, descend to maintain 2500. All right, two, four, uh, 240 to intercept down at 2500, uh, 2233. Pima 4785, turn off at 8360, slow to 180. Lighting 360, speed 180, 50, 4785. American 862, 170 to Jalto, fill off the towers 185, we'll see. All right, 170 to Jalto, see you later. 
Back in 1845, Soto 180 to maintain 4,000. 180, 4,000, American, 1845. Brickyard 53, 36, 53, 36, Brickyard. Soto 180 to maintain 4,000. Sorry, 5366? 5336. 5336, speed 180 down to 4. Southwest 2402, turn right, 180. 180, 2402. Now to 2233, increase your speed to 100. And, you know what? 180 is fine. Now to 2233, advise you to get the field inside. Uh, we get the field inside, 2233. Now to 2233, Clover's approach, 27 right, 180 knots. All right. Visual approach, 180 knots, 2233. Female 4785, channel 290, intercept. 290 to intercept, 4785. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yes, 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 yes. User disconnected from your channel. Southwest 2402, slow to 170. 170, 2402. Come on, 4785 to set and maintain 3000. Set and maintain 3000, 4785. Speedbird says, Speedbird 67 heavy, York, slow to 170, then maintain 4000. 170 down to 4000, 67 heavy. Come on, 4075, drive it to follow 12 o'clock, 4 miles, United Westbound, Jet 737 at 2500 feet. Got him in sight. My 4075, following that, a clear visual approach to seven right, slow to 170. Slow to 170, clear visual approach. We'll see you. American 2783, turn right in 200. Hold on, let me catch up. I oh, fuck. Southwest is dirty. Southwest is dirty. Fuck, 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 fuck. Southwest, why are you dirty? Southwest 2402, why are you dirty? Ah, but you guys get the concept. So, Piedmont's supposed to go in the hole there. Southwest southbound, turn American southbound. Blue Street just goes for a ride. But you got to slow them up sooner, though. You got to slow them up to 170, 180, because, you know, again, the, the final builds up and you get pushed out like really fast. You don't have a lot of room. So, whoever's feeding you, in this case, really wouldn't be feeding you at 250 anymore. They'd be feeding you at 210. When your first transmission is Speedberg or Southwest down there, slow to 180 and maintain 4,000. It's a pretty good indicator. You should be telling the guy feeding you, like, hey, man, I need 210 knots. I can't do 250 anymore. It's too fast, you know? Finals going out to fucking McGuire, you know. These guys don't want to join the military, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so part of that was my fault where I uh, I missed some of the commands. But it illustrates a point where what did Derek do? He recovered, right? Which essentially simulates a bad Vatsit pilot. They didn't do something, 2402 is turning, they hit the localizer button a little bit too early. What do you do to fix it? You vector through the localize and bring him back from the other side. Okay. And then who's going to be behind him? Uh, I would put Blue Streak, because Blue Streak's about to leave your airspace. Okay. Just so a little bit here. Let us... So what do you want to do? Feed Mod uh, 2402, what do you want to do with him? He turned to the localizer, he made a mistake, what do we do? I give him a 180 for now, vector through the localizer, expect to rejoin from the other side. See, I wouldn't do the 180, actually. I would. It depends on where he where he starts this this mess up, like the, the pilot, but I would probably at least go to, like, maybe a 200, you know? I mean, 180, just remember, it's, it's a hard right turn, they have to come back all the way up. So, like, let's let it roll for a second, actually. Let's just let's play with it. One of the other things I kind of want to show you guys, too, and I, this is actually a really good scenario. Let, let's... Jane, you gotta be on your A game for like a good three minutes, but this will be fun. So you're, I'm, you ready for this? Uh, yeah. What do you want to do with 2402 first? So give him a 200 heading. Okay. And, okay. and stay at four. You know what I mean? So no big. You know, actually, you know what? Let's do 200 heading and go to four. That's fine. Just do that for just a moment. And then unpause. Okay. Got it. American Unpause 18. Yeah. McGuire fairly point out. American 1845 down to three. Whatever. American 1845 to set up maintain 3,000. Right. We don't want to kill him. So you got that in there, making 1845 down to three. Got it. Southwest 1320, descend to 5,000. Tap 5,000, 1320. Blue Street 5433, turn left, hitting 340. Turn left, hitting 340. Piedmont 50, I'm sorry, Brickyard 5336, turn left, 060. 060, 536. Speedbird 67 Heavy, heading 060. Heading 060, speed for 67 heading. Southwest 2402, turn right, heading 300, intercept, to set and maintain 3000. All right, right turn, intercept down to 3000. 
<laughs> I can hear Jens behind. So that's 2402. Travis follows 2 o'clock. A CRJ at 3. You got him? Got him in sight. That's 2402. Follow him. Cleavage approach 2 7 right. 2 7 right visual 2402. American 2783. Turn right hitting 200. 200. 2783. American 1845 hitting 110. 110, 1845. Southwest 1320 heading 110 to send a 4,000. What am I doing here with the guys on the down one? Can someone tell me? No one can tell me why I'm turning them away. Someone, anyone, come on, someone. Blue Street 5433 heading 300 intercept. Someone. You keep it in your airspace. Well, not even that, but what I'm trying to do is increase the flying miles. You know what I'm saying? Like, break your 5336 turn right hitting 100. So by me going to a 60 and then going back to 100, I'm just increasing the flying miles. I don't want to be out here. This is uncomfortable. This is not good. So I want to get. I want to go northbound for a few miles. If I take Speedbird and let him fly the 90, well, he goes from point A to point B faster. If I put him on a 60 for just a moment and then go back to a 90 and then come back south, I've built maybe three, four miles. I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're running a final, three or four miles is like a, a plane. That's a whole plane. I mean, Speedbird's got to go last. I'm not putting any weight turbulence in front of him. You know, I'm not putting weight turbulence in front of Southwest. No way. You know what I mean? So I'm slowing back to 170, and I'm turning this guy away. So keep letting it run, Jen. It's running. Blue Streak 5433, increase speed to 190 knots. Speed 190, 5433. American 2783, turn right in 240, intercept. Right 240, intercept 2783. American 1845, turn left heading 090. 090, 1845. Southwest 2402, 170 to, uh, not Buzz, what is it? It's 170 to, uh, Jalto. J no, make it 160. You're three in trouble at CRJ. Make it 160 to, uh, Jalto and, uh, Philly Towers, 18 5. We'll see. Uh, 160 to Jalto, see at 2402. Southwest 1320, heading 090, slow to 180. 090, speed 180, Southwest 1320. Speedbird 67, heading 100. Heading 100, Speedbird 67, heavy. Blue Street 5433, descend to 3000, advise the field. Down to 3,000, got the field in sight, 5433. Very good. American 2783, increase your speed to 190 knots. Speed 190, 2783. Brickyard 5336, turn right hitting 210. 210 on the heading, 5336. American 1845, turn left hitting 010. Turn left hitting 010, 1845. I'm like going off my non standard headings. Usually it's 360 and 180, but now I'm like, I have to be way more aggressive because we're out here. No, it's no big deal, but. You want to be more aggressive on the headings. I don't want to be like 180, 240, 350, or 360. I'm like, I need to get American turning. I don't own anything all the way out there. It's like, we got to get turning. You know what I mean? American 2783, if advise the field inside. Field inside 2783. American 2783, Roger, approach, in a moment. Break our 5336, turn right in 230. 230, 5336. I'm just banging this guy in here, banging him in there. Southwest 1320, turn left, hitting 070. Turn left, hitting 070, 1320. Southwest 1320, very good. The travel to follows 10 o'clock and 4, northbound at A319 at 3. Got him in sight, 1320. Very good, plan to follow. Brickyard 5336, your, or sorry, your travel to follows 1 o'clock and 4, westbound at 737 at 4. We got him in sight, 5336. 53, sorry, Brickyard 5336, turn right, hitting 240. Follow that jet, you clear visual approach, 27 right. Hold your at speed to advise. All right, we'll hold the speed, 230, follow the 737, 5336. American 2783, Clivers will approach 27 right. 27 right, uh, 2783. Southwest 1320, turn left heading 010. 010, 1320. Speedbird 67 heavy, flighting 090. 090, speedbird 67 heavy. 090, speedbird 67 heavy. Break your 5336, pick it up for just a moment, uh, 190 knots. All right, 190 knots, 5336. American 1845, turn left heading 280, intercept. 280, intercept, 1845. Southwest 1320, turn left heading 360. 360, Southwest 1320. Just keep tightening these planes up as much as you can. That's kind of the main thing, you know. Speedbird's going to be out there for a trip, but again, imagine if we didn't go to the 60 for a minute, we'd, we'd be three more miles further east than where we are. So you just got to keep trying to find ways to make this shit work. Southwest 1320, 180 knots for now. 180, 1320. American 1845, increase speed to 190 knots. Speed 190, 1845. Like I said, if you have to increase, you know, you got to do what you got to do. But Speedbird 67 heavy, turn right, hitting 180. 180, 67 heavy. 
Southwest 13, 20, Travel Falls, 12 o'clock, just over three, Westbound and American Knee, 319 at three. So uh, you still got him? We got him in sight. All right, roger that. Plan to follow, slow 170, Southwest 13, 20. All right, slowing down to 120, and we'll follow. And that's pretty much the end of the swap box right there. But uh, Southwest 13, 20, December 18, 3,000. 3,000, 13, 20. Just trying to finagle this as much as I can, but that's pretty much it, you know. 1320. And this is the cool thing. Okay, so this is the cool thing. Let's say when I call traffic to 1320, I was going to have less than three miles. I could say maintain visual separation until I'm ready for the approach clearance. Does that make sense? Southwest yeah. 1320, channel fitting 290, follow him, cleavage approach 270. You know, All right, so, 290, follow traffic. Yeah, so it's like, again, you know, you got to go in with three miles, but in this case, he calls the traffic in sight. I'm going to obviously have less than three. I'm not going to slow him any more up any more than 170. 170 is, is pretty solid. I'm at three miles right now. He's probably going to go through a little bit, so you probably have to stay till I have 240 to join. Two bird, 67 heavy, turn right, 240 to join. 240 to join, 67 heavy. But over time, this is probably going to increase the four miles. Just because of the 29 difference in speed, but he's not going to do 190 all the way to Jalto. But yeah, just recovery sometimes. Like, okay, the guy took a turn, a bad turn. Southwest took a bad turn. You're having to play recovery. Okay, what do you do? Just start, just start asking yourself, what can you do to get this sub back in? That's all. Speedbird's in play. He goes to the end of the line, three and a half miles at 170 knots. It's not bad. And we're back to where we, we're back to square one again. You're back to a clean final. But you got to talk to your feeder controller and tell him you can't feed him. You can't, you can't feed you fast anymore. You know, that's why we got strung out here, right? It's a, it's a, it's a sweat box. It's a computer, right? He doesn't know what, what you're doing. But whoever makes the file is whatever. But they got to teach, you know, like, hey, once you're all the way out there, you're getting planes three miles apart on either side. You don't have, like, eight-mile gaps between planes. Your final is going to get full. And don't, don't forget, we only had one heavy jet, and he's right here at the back of the problem, <laughs> you know? It wasn't like we had any wake. Think about it. If one heavy jet's over Jalto, the next airplane is outside of Martin. <laughs> you know, if you get a Category B and, a, and an F or, you know, a, a – Dreamliner, and then you get a Southwest seven seven eight at five, right? You know, six and a half at one hundred and seventy knots. So one airplane's over Jalto, slowing to be ref. Your next guy's got to be like two miles outside of Jalto. So the Philadelphia final is not much room. This isn't this isn't Atlanta where there's like a forty mile final, you know. So you got to tell the feeder control, hey man, you got to feed me at two hundred and ten knots. You know, I can't. But now, which is why you're starting to see why the arrival makes the plane slow to what speed at Wojcik in uh, Erie. What do they do? One ninety. You can't have the guys going out to the east at 250. They're going to get to the problem so fast. Once you front load the problem, you got to slow everyone down. Think about it. Your planes are doing four miles a minute this way while they're almost close to six miles a minute this way. While they're doing three miles a minute that way and then hitting final approach speed doing two miles a minute. You're going out double the distance going east and you are coming in to land. You know, It's like when the planes are coming in at 300 miles an hour, they're doing what? Well, 6, 12, 18, 24, doing five miles a minute, 30, 300. For every 60 knots an airplane flies, that's a mile a minute, right? So in this case, look at British Airways. Look at his speed. 6, 12, 18 will round up. He's doing three miles a minute. This guy's going to fly 17 miles in six minutes. Well, he's 16.8 miles from the airport. That's at a constant speed. He's going to slow to VREF. But Speedbird's going to be to the airport in just over, what, five minutes maybe? You know, so he's going to be there pretty quick. But... The airplane is coming out east. They can't be fed at 250 forever. you got to slow them down to 210. So what can you do? Hey, feeder, you got to feed me at 210, man. Okay, sounds good. Or if you mean at 190, in this case, when we're all the way out there, you'd be getting fed at 190. You know what I mean? You wouldn't be getting fed at 250 or 210 anymore. It's just too fast. I don't know. That was, that was pretty much my uh, visual. That was my visual swap box, you know. To run ILS on that, you have to... You gotta really run them. You gotta run them tight. You know, run ILS on this with that with that many airplanes. It's like as soon as you get them on contact, it's like turn slow, turn slow, turn. You know. But um, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, thank you for doing this. And the, the couple of things I want to point out for you guys at work events is that have multiple options. What Derek taught here is not only a standard 360, 180 headings, 240, 300 to join. It's you can play with headings to. Get a little bit of spacing at 10, 20 degrees left or right will buy you the mile, half a mile that you need to get the proper separation. You know, again, it's like, don't panic. You already have most of your problems solved. Now you're just going to, it's like what Derek says, it, it's putting out little fires here and there. And having that tool in your belt is going to enable you to say, hey, none of us 
really speed planes up, right? Once we hit 180, we think that we're stuck there. What did Derek do? He changed some of the speeds to do what? To make it work. So don't be stuck on 360, 180, 180 speed 180, 190, 210. If you have to speed them up. Oh, you got to speed them up. You have to. Yeah. Speed them up. Yeah. You're not going to go from like 180 to 230. That's that's ridiculous. But like, you know, hey, man, I, you know, can you go to 200 knots for a couple miles? Yeah, we'll do it. And then, you know, pilots go, oh, we got to clean up the flaps a little bit. All right, we'll do it, bitch. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it happened to me last, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. I had a spirit slow to 180 knots because the wind at 180 on the tail was showing like 240. I was like, oh, God. And then I needed him to, need to pick up the speed. So I'm like, hey, I need you to go back up to, uh, to 200. He's like, oh, yeah, we can do it, no problem. You know? When they hear you're busy, when they need you to do something, they'll do it. You know? um, again, they're dirty. They probably have the gear down, but oh, well. You know, Got to increase the power. You need to pull up the flaps a little bit, man. Sorry. And Derek, can you just touch a quick uh, bit on like efficiency at final or keeping things tight so it doesn't back up? Yeah, you got to be, uh, you know, you got you to you get the planes close. That's kind of the main thing. They should be close, you know. You, you, when you're ready to turn, when you think you want to turn the one that's on the base leg, you should be turning the guy that's on the down one. That's when you know you're getting good at this is when you look up, you're like, wait a minute. If I don't turn this guy, he's still on the down one. Yeah, so you're going to turn a guy that's going to go westbound if the guy's still on the down one going east. That guy that's getting ready to turn to the final – that should be your key hint. Like, oh, I should be turning the guy off the downwind to the base, right? So turn right one eight zero. Then you go to the other guy. Hey, you know, airport, whatever. Or hey, six from Jalto, two one three zero zero, two thousand dollars established. What else do you say? Next thing you know, you look up. The guy's in the turn southbound. Next guy, turn left three six zero. Other guy, turn right two forty intercept. Other guy, so one eight to seven eighteen three thousand. Turn right one eight zero to seven eighteen three thousand. It's just like a, it's like a, it's like a factory, you know, it's like a factory. But again, the running joke, it's all in the feed. It's all in the feed. You shouldn't have to work hard as a final controller if you get a good feed. That's the main thing. If you get a good feed, you're in good shape. Yep. And then any events that you guys work, coordinate with your feeder controllers, right? Because the, the part of that is communication. It's Derek, in real world, you guys coordinate all the time, correct? Like, hey, I need this, I need that. Just mm, to kind of, uh, not necessarily. You can kind of look up and see a guy like, oh, yeah, this guy's down the shit or he needs 210 knots. You know what I mean? You might just look up and go, you know what? I'm going to tell you you need to, Tim, because I can tell. Sometimes a controller is so focused on a on something, you know, that um, they don't realize that they're down the shitter, you know. So it's it's nice to help them out and kind of like be their eyes and ears for them, you know. That's a good point, too. So whenever you guys, anybody here works feeder, keep an eye on, on your final guys. Make sure they're taking, they're taking care of. And knowing this information as the final controller, have that in the back of your mind as well. I know we all go down the shitter and it's happened to all of us. So a lot of these tips and tricks that Derek's offering will help bail you out in most of these situations. But again, this has got to be practice and this has got to be like either written down and say, hey, at Philly, I can do 10, 20 degrees. When you're working at Newark, LaGuardia, Kennedy, whatever it may be, you know your final, your, your turn of final headings and you know your base legs. So adjust it accordingly. You, you see that a little bit of speed control and a little bit of vectoring to get your flying miles, which is what Derek talks about a lot, will solve the majority of the problems that you have, even with quote unquote bad bats and pilots here. Okay, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to any other latent questions that you guys have. Again, take this opportunity because, again, yeah. Derek's here. We're getting it directly from somebody who works this. So take the opportunity now. Um, if not, then we can close this out. Jen, if we had just like uh, a little bit of time, can you talk about CRDA? Like, yeah, uh, um, two seven right three five something like that, and kind of figuring that stuff out. Anybody here have better experience with? I don't have okay. as much experience with CRDA. So basically, the way. That <laughs> The way that it works, um, have you ever seen like what it looks like when you're running CRDA? Yeah, yeah, I've done it. I'm just right. I'm thinking like how so, do you plan it out in advance? Because you don't get that little tick until he's already established on final. Like the um, ghost airplane? Yeah. So that's that's the real trick, right? Is um and, and that's one that I, I can't really speak to because I'm crap at it. But like it you so like the account. CRDA is basically for just like fine tuning it, right? Like, you should be kind of having people on similar track mileages um, when they get into the final box for the two converging runways. And then the CRDA just shows you, you know, how to fine tune 
the, the guy on the second runway's turn to final. Right. So it, it's less of a, you know, figuring out how to get people These into the final box. Time. It's once they're in the final box, when exactly, you know, like within a couple seconds are you turning them kind of deal. All right. I, I just didn't know if there was more to it than that. I'm sure someone else could speak to it who's used it more often. <laughs> No, I think Logan uh, hit it on the head. I think the main thing with the CRDA, and I don't know, I don't know what the functions are for stars or anything, so I'm not the guy to ask about that. But you know, essentially, is in real world, I can talk about Newark for example. So when we run CRDA, you can't compress down to two and a half miles. You have to land with three. So CRDA typically is used. Let's say we're landing um, twenty uh, twos and eleven, right? Um, that's when you use CRDA. Well, it's weird. It's like we run CRDA because there's more volume. So like Newark, we really can't, I don't want to say can't, but straight 22s, just straight 22s. Our rate is like 40 an hour. We might be able to get 43 on the ground, but again, you're, you're running them hard, like visual VMC, like compressing down to like probably less than two and a half. Well, CRDA, it's, it's like, oh, we're going to open CRDA so we can land more planes. And it's like, yeah, but, I can't go down two and a half miles on the 22s anymore. I mean, so it's like I got to hold three miles. Well, when you're used to 3.1, 3.2 at 170 knots, 160 knots, that compresses down to 2.2. You know, like let's say a 739, you know, it's got a fucking roller coaster V-ref. It's like 150, one whatever. And they're following Lindbergh, who pulls out and balloons to 120. That's going to compress. I don't care what day it is, you know, where it's no wind or at all, whatever. So the issue is you got to start with three and three quarters, maybe three and a half is like the lowest. You're going to lose a half mile no matter what day it is. Like I've never been to work on a day where we don't lose a half mile, you know? So what, three and three quarters at 160, four miles at 180, maybe four miles These at 170 probably. So it's like you can't even go down to two and a half anymore. You got to hold three miles between every plane. And the only guaranteed time where you're going to have that separation is when you're following a heavy jet when you need like seven to get five. And, you know, the person working CRDA loves following the ghost target when there's a heavy jet because, you know, you're always going to have a big gap there, right? So essentially is the CRDA target picks up a target from like ultra range over by Teterboro between like three and 5,000 feet because you're not supposed to be joining the final on 5,000 feet. You're probably not going to have a stable approach. And you follow that ghost target within a quarter mile of that quarter to I think it's a half mile. You got to be in front or behind of that ghost target and, you know, stay at a matching speed. It's tough if you've got a tailwind, right? So like the other day we were running CRDA and the fucking planes are going around and we're all looking at each other like, why are we doing this? Brickyard's not landing. The wind is 250 at eight, gusting to 15. There's a crosswind for 22s and now there's a quartering tailwind for 11. This is silly. This is so silly. What are we doing? So now when you think you're busy, what do you think is going to happen? We got to rework those planes all over again. So like, you know, they only do what? A 737, no 800, no 900 series, no Airbus, no 75. So it's just CRJs, Embraer's, and 737s. So it's like, you know, and now you got to rework those planes all over again. So it's like the conditions just have to be perfect to run the CRDA stuff. You know what I mean? Um, but again, I think it's more of a pain in the ass because you have to have more separation on the 22 final, which is. It's just silly to me, very silly. You know, I'd rather run the stadium visual two nine, which we did yesterday, and you know, just have a blast with it. You know, calling traffic, calling the stadium in sight. You know, whatever, whatever. But um, yeah, the conditions just have to be right, and the tower also is supposed to have experience with the CRDA. That's the other thing too. They they get trained on it, which is sometimes why they open it. I get it. They open it for training purposes, but they tell the aircraft like, okay, break your slow to your final. Oh, nope, increase speed to one seventy. Okay, slow it up ten knots. Increase speed ten knots. It's like you're fucking flying a fighter jet on the runway 1-1 landing on a carrier. You know, it's like, call the ball. <laughs> it's like, speed up, slow down, speed up. Slow, I'm so, you know, it's like, it's annoying. I I think it's kind of silly. All right, thank you. I appreciate that perspective, thank actually. You, yeah, it's silly. It's just silly. I it just, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's, I'd rather be down the shitter on 22s getting my teeth kicked in and run them really tight as much as I can than CRDA. I hate it. I think it's silly. It shuts down Morristown. Morristown can't launch a departure unless there's a gap, you know? So it's just silly. So if you're flying out of Morristown on a beautiful VMC day, it's just a mess. It's a mess. It's it's terrible, actually. I'm terrible. Terrible.
terrible. Indeed. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Yeah, I'm glad to get that perspective. Again, who else needs questions? I don't have a question, Jay. Go ahead, Derek. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, man. What are we drinking tonight? That's what I was. <laughs> I'm about to run a New York box, but listen. I uh, just wanted to thank everybody for showing up, especially Derek. I know he took time out of his day to, uh, you know, share some knowledge and do some knowledge transfer here. We're going to have a lot more of these. So, I, you know, the thing I ask of you guys is, you know, talk to your friends about this, you know, get more get more um, participation on this because it is really is a treasure trove of knowledge that we can learn from these guys. And they are taking the time out to to help us because they love to do what they do. Now, we're going to do a little bit of change for the next one. I know we're supposed to do Tower, but the schedule's um, kind of aligned where we're going to probably work with Corey on the 17th for center controllers. So I'll, I'll amend the post on there. So if anybody's interested in the in-route environment, sequencing tricks, um, you know, how it differs from Tracon, you know, you don't have to be C1 controller to do it, but I think it's also a good way to get some knowledge transfer in from somebody that does this and teaches it in real world as well. So, you know, Thank you guys for showing up. Any feedback on this, things we can do better, please let me know. Just private message me and you know we'll, we'll work on these as we get more sessions.